Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Four Corners. Would you go ahead and stand to your feet? We're going to get started with some songs here this morning. I want to invite you to sing with us. Here we go. of you. We love you, Jesus.
Ephesians tells us how deep, how wide, how high is the love of Christ. And it goes on to say, the same God who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. So let's just lift up our hearts today and embrace his love for us. Let's sing it out together. with you that really just brings that to mind for me. For the last month, 28 days, we've been reading the book of Matthew in our youth group, Youth of the Four Corners. And it was a challenge to our students to just read on their own time a chapter a day. And so today's the 28th day. And so I thought I'd read to you from Matthew 28, 18 through 20. It says, Jesus came and told the disciples, I've been given authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I love these verses, and I I, I love just reading the gospel because what I'm amazed by is that a few faithful men went out and actually were obedient to God's command to go out and tell the nations. And because of that, I'm standing in front of you right now, being able to speak on a microphone about Jesus. We're able to worship in this room because of a few faithful men who went out and planted churches and told the good news. And faithful men and women throughout the ages continued to tell God's story, continued to speak about the love of Jesus. And because of that, we're able to talk about it right now. We're able to hear it. We're able to experience it. And so I just want to challenge you because I'm challenged when I read this. We've got to go out. We've got to tell others about Jesus' love. We've got to go into all the nations. What does that look like for you in your life? How do you, who are the people that you can speak to and tell of Jesus' love? We have a responsibility just like they did. Because if we don't tell the next generation, who will? Who will do it? It's got to be us. It's got to be us. God's love is so amazing. He's worth sharing. And maybe you're like me and you just feel like this is difficult sometimes. I know I do. I love these last words that Jesus says. Be sure of this. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. We need to begin to put our faith in Jesus. When things get hard, when it seems like we're about to say something that we don't know if people are going to receive, we just need to begin to put our faith in Christ, that he's going to speak through our words. God's going to do amazing things if we'll begin to go into all the nations, begin to go into independence and speak the good news. Pray with me this morning. Father, we just love you so much, and we thank you for faithful men and women throughout the ages who shared your love. God, that's how I know that your love never ends, is because you used people throughout time to reach me. And God, I just take it as the the greatest responsibility and an honor to tell others about how amazing you are, about how you change everything when you come into contact with our lives. Lord, give us the strength to do that in our own way, in our own spheres, in our own lives. And God, when it gets tough, when life gets hard and we feel like we can't, Lord, I just pray that you'd remind us that you're with us always. We can place our faith in you. We can come to you with anything in prayer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can be seated. My name is Connor. I'm the youth pastor here at Church of the Four Corners, if you hadn't guessed already. And we are so glad that you're here with us this morning. 
I just want to welcome you if you're here for the very first time, maybe you're watching online for the first time. Everything we're doing this morning has been done with you in mind. Church of the Four Corners, can we give it up for all of our first time guests? Yeah. So glad that you're with us this morning. Hey, if you're here for the first time and you're in the building, we would love for you to let us know you were here. You can do that through your Connect card. It looks like this. And so there's a place on here for your information and then some boxes highlighted in blue. Fill out your information and then check those boxes because they help us to know you're here for the first time. And then you can do one of two things. We'll have offering buckets going around at the end of service and you can drop it in there and then it'll make it to us. Or what I recommend is that you hold on to it take it through the back doors and take a right and there's our VIP table in that hallway and they will, in exchange for this card, give you an awesome coffee mug and we just want to bless you because we're so glad you're here. So please take advantage of this. Let us know you're here. It's very important to us that we know that you came. Um, and I also want to give you our no hassle guarantee. If you fill this out, we're not going to come knocking on your door later. We'll simply send you an email that says thanks for coming. We want to respect your privacy, but we really want to know you were here. So fill this out for us. We also want you to know we have an alternate viewing environment located in our cafe. It's to the right of the VIP table. Hopefully you've already been there, had some awesome coffee. Right now, I am being streamed on a TV in there. And so if you need to step out this morning for any reason, you can do that. Don't feel weird about it. Go to the cafe and don't miss the service. You know, if you need to step out, do it, but don't miss the service. Take advantage of that. It's there for you. I don't have a lot of announcements. A lot of this is going to be on the church news, um, but I want to reiterate this. You'll hear it again. Next Sunday from 5 to 7, we are doing our owner's meeting. Maybe you've been to one before, maybe not. This is a meeting for anyone who's gone through Growth Track and is now an owner. We want you to bring your family. We're going to have a service. We're going to have uh, some worship together. We're going to talk about a few things about the church. We'll feed you. Child care is provided. But we'd love for you to be there. So owners and their families, make sure and come this next Sunday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Be there. We'd love to see you. Well, in a second here, Craig's going to come out. And we're going to continue our awesome series, Outliers. You are in for a treat. This is a hilarious message. It's awesome. Before we get there, though, I want you to stand up, greet somebody this morning, tell them hello. Everybody, what's up? My name is Luke. And I'm Paul. And welcome to Church of the Four Corners. We, we are, are so, so happy that you're, you're here. here. That was Thanks, the Luke. failedest of twin things we've ever done. Starting off, this week is 401 for our growth track. We're concluding that class. Um, but if you've never gone to growth track, you can still join today. Or you can just wait till next week because next week is 101. Signups start today. Get involved. Get what? plugged in. Next week is our owner's meeting. It's on March the 6th. The day after our birthday. Our birthday is on the 5th. It is. Yeah. Yeah. High five. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, next week, March 6th, is our owner's meeting. And we were super excited about this because it's a time for us to all come together and celebrate what God is doing in the life of our church and for us to just grow together as a family. We're super excited about this night and can't wait to see you guys there. Yeah. Cool beans. Beans. Cool, cool, cool. beans. Beans. Cool, cool beans. Cool, cool. Beans. Beans. Cool. Beans. Cool, cool. Beans. Beans. Cool. Beans. Cool. beans. Coming up on March 20th, we have our baptisms happening. We're super excited about that. So if you would like to be baptized and if that's like the next step that you need to take, go ahead and sign that and I put that on your connect card thing and drop it in the thing or VIP. The thing? All of the things. Youth of the Four Corners. This week we are having a worship night and the information is right there on the screen. I think it's at something Baptist Church. Can you tell me? Country Meadows Baptist Church. Five. 45? Go there at 545. Okay, the uh, address is on the screen. Just go to that church and you guys are gonna have an awesome time worshiping God together as a youth group. That was horribly said. Wow, that was good. Thanks, Luke. Thank you guys so much for coming. We're so excited that you guys are here. And to get you guys in the mood for our third installment of Outliers, here's Joe and Heidi.
Good morning. Hey, welcome to Church of the Four Corners. My name's Craig. For those of you who might not know me, so glad that you're here. Hey, church, one more time. Can we put our hands together and welcome all of our first-time guests attending with us this morning and also our church family attending online. So glad and honored to have you with us today. We are in week three of our relationship and marriage series that we have entitled Outliers. So Webster's Dictionary defines outlier as this. An outlier is a statistical observation that is markedly different in value from the others of a sample. So an outlier is an anomaly. An outlier is abnormal. And that is the heart of this series. When it comes to your relationships and your marriages, we don't want normal. Normal is broken. Normal is dysfunctional. Normal is that half of your marriages will end in divorce. And we believe that God has called us to be an outlier. So how do we do that? And throughout this series, we're going to be giving you five behaviors that we believe with, uh, those behaviors working in tandem with each other form a not only a healthy relationship, but will equip you to build a divorce-proof marriage. In week one, we talked about easily the most important of all of the behaviors, which was, who remembers it? Seek God. Literally, no one remember that? You can watch these messages online. Seek God together. As amazing as I'm sure your spouse might be, they are your number two. God is your one, and your spouse is your two. So we challenged all of you single folks in the house to seek the one while preparing for your two. So when you find yourself in a season of preparation, we challenged you to hold your life to the same standard that you would the person that you want to one day marry. Become like the person that you dream about. And for all of you married folks, we challenged you to seek the one with your two. And we were blown away at over 300 people that signed up for the 21 days of prayer. Can we thank God for that? How incredible is that? So full disclosure, confession time, Laura and I have missed a few days. I got sick and we went out of town, but we're going to stay at it. You know why? Because it's not about a 21-day challenge. It's about implementing behaviors and practices into our lives. So we need to, above and beyond anything else, seek God. Last week, Reverend Bishop Connor Jones brought the good word. Didn't he do awesome? He did a great job giving us our second behavior, which was to what? Connor, you did so much better than I did. Everyone knows, fight fair. And notice how the behavior is not don't fight or minimize the conflict, but it's to fight fair. It's this understanding that conflict in relationships is inevitable Conflict is amoral, meaning it's neither good nor bad, but rather the power of conflict comes in how we handle it. If we'll commit to, as couples, engaging conflict in a healthy way, it will bring us together. But when it becomes unhealthy, it can tear to shreds even the healthiest of marriages. Which then leads us to today, week three, our third behavior which is have fun. Everyone say that with me. Have fun. And so since that's what we're going to be talking about today, we're going to laugh a little bit, and we're going to have lots of fun together. So this would be a good time to mention that maybe if you're here and you have a child with you who might be traumatized by us talking about sex in service this would be a great time for you to take advantage of one of the wonderful children's ministries that we have taking place all throughout church right now. So we're going to have some fun this morning. And I would imagine for a lot of you, this week's behavior will come as the greatest surprise. Because obviously, we're going to talk about making marriage spiritual. See God. Obviously, we're going to talk about conflict resolution. Fight fair. But fun? Really? I mean, we only get to do this 52 times a year. Is this really important enough that we would dedicate an entire message around it? And I would say to you emphatically, yes. 
Not only is having fun in our marriages and our relationships important, I believe that it is central to the way that God has designed marriage to be experienced. So let's read together in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 9, where it says, Live, let's say that word together, happily with the woman or man that you have through all the meaningless days of life that God has given you under the sun. That's kind of a strange verse, isn't it? It means that in life, there's going to be those days where you just get lost in the minutia and the routine. There's going to be those days where nothing of significance happens. But we're being told that even on those days, the bland days, the forgettable days, we can live with joy and fun in our marriages. Goes on to say, the wife God gives you is your reward for all your earthly toil. What a beautiful promise. That God's reward for us is that we can have marriages that are healthy and happy. And it goes along perfectly with what we talked about in week one. We've established that we don't want normal in our lives. Normal's broken. Normal is that 50% of marriages end in divorce. So now then let's examine the other 50. Because I'm not naive enough to believe that of the 50% that survive, not all 50% of those are happy and healthy. But God promises us that it is our reward to have marriages and relationships that thrive. Because what happens is when we eliminate the element of fun in our marriages, what starts out as sharing life together, it now becomes we're simply roommates. When we eliminate the element of fun in our relationships, what was once engaging and stimulating conversation about our goals and our aspirations and our dreams that God has for our life has now digressed to simply revolving around logistical talks of who's going to go to the grocery store and drop the kids off at soccer. But it never starts that way, does it? Like, I've never heard a girl say, Mom, you won't believe it. I've met this guy, and he's so dull. He, he has no personality whatsoever, and when we're together, he ignores me and plays video games. I think I'm in love. I think I found the one. Because, guys, let's just admit, like, we're really great at when we're dating, we try really hard. We, we, we get creative, we go above and beyond, but yet when we get married, we kind of just quit. And I'm not picking on you. Like, I struggle with this as well. This is a challenge for me in my life. When Laura and I, when we first started dating, we did crazy and romantic things. We would, we would sneak in to pools after they closed. Teenagers, don't do that. Don't follow the example of your pastor. Uh, we would, one year for Valentine's Day, I bought Laura literally hundreds of roses we had the quintessential movie moment where we picked a tree and we carved our initials around a heart. And I can take you 15 years later to that same tree and show you the initials. In fact, the day that Laura and I got engaged, I showed up to her house. I love the fact that Laura was at first service and not here. So it's no holds barred, baby, today. We're going to have some fun. The day that we got engaged, I showed up to her house and I surprised her, and we flew her to Chicago for the day. And young guys, you need to start taking notes right now, because I was a stud this one day. <laughs> and we went all around Chicago. I took her to Tiffany and & Company and had her pick up a custom-engraved bracelet. We had this beautiful dinner on a, in a high-rise. And then in the middle of the lawn of Millennium Park, I popped a knee, and I proposed. It was awesome. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. In fact, though, funny side note, that day almost never happened because an hour before our plane left, Laura and I faced what would be at that time the greatest relationship challenge we've ever walked through. So we went and ate at Cinnabon, cinnamon rolls at the airport. You guys ever had one of those? Like mind-blowing, life-changing cinnamon rolls? 
And I have this weird idiosyncrasy. I don't know why I do it. It's weird. But I will, from time to time, cut out the center of my cinnamon roll, and I'll place it off to the side. Because clearly the ooey-gooey center of the cinnamon roll is the best part. That's common knowledge. And so I will struggle through the tasteless outer crust, knowing that with each morsel and bite, it progressively gets more and more tasty. You guys following me? So we're eating, and I look down, and the center of my cinnamon roll is missing (laughs) off of my plate. And I look up, and Laura is very conspicuously licking her lips. And I say, Laura, where's, where's the center of my Cinnabon cinnamon roll? And she says, I'll never, these are burned in my heart to this day, these words. I ate it. I didn't think that you wanted it. <laughs> Guys, my relationship with Laura almost ended that day. In fact, it was a moment of clarity for me because I knew, like, for better or for worse, am I going to spend the rest of my life with this woman who ate the center of my cinnamon roll? But we flew out anyway, and it has been the best decision of my life. I digress, however. The point being that when we are dating, we try and we exert energy and effort, but then sometimes when we get married, we forget how to have fun. We forget. So today I want to talk about three types of fun that I believe every couple needs in their relationship. These are not recommended. I believe that they are mandatory to building a marriage that will last. The first type of fun that we need to experience in our lives is face-to-face fun. Face-to-face fun. And in order for us to experience this, we have to place ourselves in environments where, yep, you guessed it, we are face-to-face. And I get that as we get older and as life gets more complicated, it becomes harder and harder to achieve this. This becomes something that we have to be intentional and guard these environments. So what I want to do this morning is look at three passages of Scripture that are shared between Solomon and his Shulamite lover. And I believe that these three passages of Scripture perfectly describe the three types of fun that we need in our lives. So the first passage that we're going to share, we're going to begin reading in Song of Solomon or Song of Songs, same book, interchangeable, depending on which Bible you have. Beginning in chapter 7, verse 1, and this is Solomon, and he's describing his lover's body, starting with the bottom and working his way up. So teenagers with parents in the room, things are about to get uncomfortable. Verse 1, how beautiful your sandaled feet, O prince's daughter. Your graceful legs are like jewels, the work of an artist's hands. So my man Solomon, he's kind of a stud, right? He's got some literary mojo. He's a poet, and he knows it. Verse 2, your navel is like a rounded goblet that never lacks blended wine. If I had a dollar for every time Laura told me that my navel was like a rounded goblet, (laughs) Laura, it's old. I know. Your waist is a mound of wheat encircled by lilies. And this is when it gets really good in verse 3. It says this. Your breasts are like two fawns, like twin fawns of a gazelle. So apparently he's really excited that there's two. (laughs) And in the room, men right now, you've never been so interested in gazelles in your life. (laughs) Tell me more about these fascinating creatures, the gazelle. As I wipe the sweat from my brow. Verse 4. Your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes are the pools of Heshbon by the gate of Bath Rabin. So what is he doing? He's serenading his lover. He's wooing her in intimate and very sensual detail. He's describing her her beauty, her majesty, and he's doing it to her face. 
Now let's get very practical for a moment because if you haven't noticed already, this is a super practical series. In order for us, now obviously this is very unique terminology. This is a, a somewhat antiquated nomenclature. We don't talk like that anymore, but in order for us to have these modern day conversations like that, they're not going to happen probably after just a really long day at work on a Tuesday, right? They're not going to happen after you've been fighting with kids all day, and they're absolutely not going to happen the moment that you plop down on the couch and turn on Netflix. And so it's recognizing this that I would tell you, couples, married people in the room, you have to fight for date night. You have to fight for it. And I say that word fight very intentionally. It will never happen on its own. If you just sit back and say, oh, well, when life slows down, when our calendar frees up, when we have more margin, you're never going on a date. You're gonna, your dates are going to be reduced to eating Burger King in the van. And that's lame. <laughs> you need to make time for it. And I get it. And once you add kids in the picture, it just gets harder. Especially for those of you with really small kids right now, I understand. I've been in the situation where you call over the babysitter and you're about to walk out the door and your kids are screaming, Mom, don't leave me with this stranger. I thought you loved me. And they're just laying the guilt on thick. And then you have that moment where you think, you know what? Maybe it would just be easier if we just stayed. Can I just give you a bit of advice? Get the heck out of there. Get out of your house. Leave. Your kids will be fine. That will not come up in counseling years later. They're going to be okay. In fact, I would argue that the best gift you could give your kids, even above spending quality time with them, is two godly parents who really love each other. So you got to fight for the date night. And I'm talking to myself now. you got to put the phone down. All right? Real life is happening. Let's put the phone down. You have to turn the TV off. You maybe you need to get out of the house. Probably. Absolutely. You need to get out of the house. Maybe for you, you need to go away on a retreat. Laura and I, we weren't here last Sunday, and I love you guys, but I didn't miss you for a second because we were sitting on a beach in Puerto Vallarta, living it up. Just us. <coughs> and it was amazing. You need that. You need to separate, create those environments, fight for them. They will not happen on their own. So we need face-to-face -face fun. Here's the second type of fun that we need, side-by-side -side fun. Everyone say that, side-by-side -side fun. This is when you and your spouse, you go out and you do a common activity together that you both enjoy. So a few weeks ago, we accepted submissions from you on couples at our church that said, we are truly up for anything. Well, this is why we did it. Check out the video. So a few weeks ago, we asked our couples here at the church, are you guys up for anything? And we had some great responses. And Drew and Jenna Huff are the lucky winners. And so we are gonna go tell them right now. Let's go. Drew and Jenna! What's up? Hey guys. Are I'm you guys good. up for anything? Absolutely. Oh my God. Are you guys ready to go? Uh, sure, yeah, come on. Guys, you cheer to it. We're at the Buffalo Wild Wings here in Independence to do the hot wing challenge. Are you guys ready? Yeah! Are you like, you can read it over, but you don't have to. What? You can't sign here. This is just saying that if you should die, the Buffalo Wild Wings not be held responsible. Oh man, this is not right. Oh, this isn't something you should do in public.
Let's give it up for Drew and Jana. They were great sports all day, and I'm sure that their mouths are still burning from the fire wings. Anytime you have to sign a paper and someone discloses just because you might die, <laughs> typically that's the stopping point, but they continue on. Hey, here's what Solomon's lover writes to him in verse 11. She says this, Come, my beloved, let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. So what she's saying is, hey, let's get away, just you and me. Let's retreat. Let's leave the kids behind, and you and I do something side by side. And this is for something Laura and I, we have to really get creative because maybe you're like me and you married someone that is very different from you. Now, I tend to be a little bit more adventurous and I seek activity. Laura, however, she wants to hang at the house. She's a homebody. She would much rather read a book about zip lining than actually go zip lining. I almost drove Laura crazy on our honeymoon because we're sitting in Maui and she just wants to lay on a beach. And I'm like, we got to go, 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 go. And I had about 15 activities. So even though we are vastly different, we have found some things that we love to do together. So one of those is that we love to find new restaurants. Anyone else out there a little bit more adventurous? For us, we get very uh, creative in our culinary endeavors. The further from the U.S., the better. Thai food, Indian food, Ethiopian food, you name it. We will consume it heartily. Another thing we love to do, we love coffee. So we'll go downtown and we'll find new shops and we'll hang out. This one, I might lose my man card by admitting it publicly, but I don't care. We love to go to antique shops together and go to thrift stores. Any other dudes like first service hooked me up. There you go. It takes a real man to admit that he goes to an antique shop. I just love looking at other people's old and weird stuff. We love to go to movies. And so for you, like, what are some of those things that you and your spouse, you can do together side by side? Because ladies, wives in the room, I imagine that this is something that you've thought. Because generally speaking, and I know that there are obvious exceptions to every rule, but universally, men are not as good at communicating their feelings as women. So wives, you probably thought at one point in your relationship, I wish he would just tell me what he's thinking. I wish he would bear to me his soul and let me in. So the pastor of Life Church, his name's Craig Rochelle, he wrote the book From This Day Forward. It's actually what this series is based off of. He says this, that in a man's life, there are two times when he is most likely to be very open and more communicative says the first is when he's doing something with you that he enjoys, whether that's uh, riding on a motorcycle or going to a football game or playing in a co-ed softball league. He says the second, however, is right after he's gotten done doing something with you that he enjoys. Wink. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can read between the lines of what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and it's on that thought, in that same heart, it perfectly segues us into the third type of fun that every couple needs to experience, and it's belly button to belly button fun. <laughs> we need face-to-face -face fun, we need side-by-side -side fun, but we need some belly button to belly button fun. The sexual component of every relationship. Let's once again read in verse 11 and 12 what Solomon's lover writes. She says, come my beloved, let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. Let us go early to the vineyard to see if the vines have budded, if their blossoms have opened, and if the pomegranates are in bloom. And there I will give you my love. So modern day interpretation of this Hey, let's go to a park and have sex. <laughs> now, I think I need to obviously clarify, don't do that. Don't go to a park and have sex. You will be arrested. 
Unless you find a really secretive park. No, <laughs> kidding. But just think with me for a moment, how important, how important is this? Can we put that verse back up for a moment? It says something that, oh, I'm sorry, the next one. There's something in this next verse that I think is just so key for us to understand. And we need to ask the question, is it really God's desire for us to enjoy sex with our spouse? I mean, was sex given to us merely for the purpose of procreation, or was, was it a gift that God gave to us to enjoy? And I love what it says in Proverbs 5, 18 and 19. It says, may your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. A loving doe, a graceful deer, may her breasts satisfy you always, and may you ever be captivated with her love. And it's interesting because the Hebrew word for captivated, it's this word shagah. And it's the same word that they would use to describe one animal attacking and killing another animal. Interesting. So it's this, this picture that may you not just be the type of couple where it's like, oh yeah, we were young and full of life and vigor and we had this very sexually intimate relationship but then we had kids and we got old and it just kind of waned over time instead he says enjoy the wife of your youth but may her love take you captive may the love of your spouse arrest you not just in your youth but always for 30 40, 50 years, may you always be captivated by one another. And I know we've laughed and we've had a lot of fun, but I do want to just take one moment and speak to you seriously, husbands and wives. And husbands, I want to talk to you first, and I just want to give you one bit of advice. We could talk about a million different things, but here's the one thing I would say to you. When it comes to the sexual component of your relationship, Earn it. Earn it. And here's what I mean by that. Let me explain. I don't mean earn it in the sense of, hey, how many dishes do I have to do and rooms do I have to clean to have sex tonight? That's not what I'm talking about. I mean earn it by once again pursuing it. Once again, being captivated by her. To do the things that you once did. And can we just be honest and admit that most of us in the room are not good at this? I would challenge you to stop assuming that your wife owes you that because it's her duty or you just deserve it because you work hard and put food on the table. But would you begin to pursue her again? Would you begin to speak words of life over her? Would you just step back and acknowledge this amazing gift and treasure that God gave you? Right? None of us in the room that are married got married because we were bored with each other. You knew at one point how to have fun. You knew how to romance her and to, to pursue her. But yet so many times we stop trying. So would you serve her and love her in a way that she desires sexual intimacy with you? And ladies, here's my bit of advice for you. And it's that you would be full of of grace and here's here's what I mean by that I get because I've had conversations with some of you when you say listen I don't want to have sex with my husband because he's kind of a freaking jerk he's disrespectful he's emotionally detached he he hasn't spoken words of life over me words of appreciation over me in years, so you think to yourself, well, if he's not going to try, well, then neither will I. 
forget. And I want you to hear my heart. So as I just mentioned, I believe wholeheartedly it's the duty and responsibility of a man to do his part, to meet you halfway, and to pursue you. So with that said, we need to understand, however, that when you shut that faucet off, that when the sexual component of your relationship is eliminated, it creates a crisis in the life of your husband. And I don't use that word lightly. A crisis. Because think with me for a moment. You are his only legitimate outlet for sexual fulfillment. The only one. All other paths will lead him to a healthy place. So at the end of the day, my heart for you is that your husband would serve you in a way. He would treat you in a way. He would pursue you in a way that you desire to have sexual intimacy with him. But my heart is also that you would have the same attitude as Christ. And as we serve a very gracious God who extends grace to us, who gives us that which we don't deserve, forgiveness, salvation, redemption, that you would adopt that same mentality and extend grace even when it hasn't been deserved. And men, the same challenge is true of you. There are going to be times where you don't feel like being sensitive. There are times when I don't feel like meeting the emotional needs. For some of us, we think, oh, well, I'm unappreciated, so why would I come home and say this or do that or clean up when, when I've been busting it for 30 years, never once have I heard the word thank you or you're a provider. We need to understand that feelings follow action. That's really good. I'm going to say it again. Feelings follow action. One of my favorite verses to share, Jeremiah 17, 9. For the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? How destructive, how unhealthy will your marriage be when there's two people doing whatever their heart tells them to do in that moment? It's the opposite of a healthy marriage. A healthy marriage says, I'm gonna serve God first, and then I'm gonna take this person and be considerate to them. And by considerate, I mean, I'm gonna put their needs above mine. So it's never about what I want. Because in a healthy marriage, I don't have to worry about what I want because my wife's worrying about that. She wants to serve me and I wanna serve her. But when we get into this rut and we just let the heart lead, we let feelings lead. Man, I don't want to live like that. Some of us in the room right now, we're in marriages like that. We're just gonna look out for number one. We're gonna do our own thing. We just kind of exist. But I believe God is something better for us. And that's my challenge to you. Would you do the things that you once did? Because I believe it's possible for you to not only have what you once had, but something greater. Something with deep meaning and value because you have years of shared life and experience together. God's heart for us is to have fun. The church is known for being the boringest, stingiest people on the planet, and it's backwards. People should look at us and be like, what in the world? They're filled with joy and laughter and life. And that's the marriage I want. I know whether you're single or married, that's the the relationship that you desire. Let's do what we once did. Let's fight for face-to-face fun. Spend some money, maybe don't spend money, right? I think that's a lie. Like, oh, we can't afford to date. Really? Go walk in a park. I said this first service. Go to Costco and eat some samples, right? Get creative. It's never about how nice the meal is. It's who I'm spending the time with. Face to face, fight for it. Side by side fun. What are some things that we can do together? Let's sit down over a date and talk about it. What are those things that 
do we both enjoy? What are those commonalities? Because maybe you're way different, but they're there. And lastly, man, let's, let's fight to be sexually intimate and close. It brings us together. It's the ultimate expression of how special someone is to you, me. Because God gave it to us as a gift. And I believe that when we can pursue those three things, when we can implement that fun, when we can adopt this behavior, we can be more than a statistic. We can truly be an outlier. Does that sound good? Hey, pray with me. Father, thank you. Thank you that you've called us out of the fold. We thank you that a life serving you, it's a countercultural life. That our faith in you, it determines our decisions which go against the grain. Father, that we know that this world is broken, it's sinful, it's hurting, but you came to bring life, life more abundantly, and when we will model our hearts, when we will seek you, Father, our actions will lead us to be the anomaly, to be abnormal, to have marriages that are healthy and happy and full of life and laughter. Forgive us of those times when we've just forgotten how to have fun. Forgive us of the times when we've stopped pursuing the one that you've given us. Father, I repent of those times in my life where I just fail to appreciate the amazing gift that you've given me and Lord. Fight against selfishness, pride, and help us, give us the attitude of Christ as your spirit lives in us and empowers us every day to live righteously. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you're here this morning and you would say this, that Craig, if I'm going to be honest, life's just gotten real busy. Work and schedules. In my marriage, honestly, I think we've just forgotten how to have fun. And I just pray this real simple prayer that God would begin to renew our friendship in a new way this morning. If that's you, would you raise your hand? I want to pray over you this morning. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your boldness. You can put those hands down. Secondly, maybe you're here and, and you just say, Craig, I want to get better at doing what I once did so that I can have not only what I once had, but more. I want to get more intentional at pursuing my two as I seek the one. If that's you, would you raise your hand? My hand's up. My hand's up. Yes, hand's up all over. Thank you for your honesty. And lastly, as you put your hands down, maybe you would say this. Craig, my first step in experiencing a life of joy and purpose and fulfillment is to begin a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I've tried life on my own, but now I realize that I can't do it. And I need to call upon the one who can. I need to call upon the one who came and lived a perfect life, who voluntarily was nailed to a cross to shed his blood for my sins. I want to accept Jesus Christ in this moment and put my trust my hope in him. And I'm not going to embarrass you or call you forward, but if that's you, would you raise your hand? We want to pray over you this morning. I see that hand. Thank you. 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 Anyone else? Say, I just need Jesus this morning. Yes, Father. Thank you. You can put those hands down. Hey, listen, we're going to say a prayer, and I'd like all of you to repeat it after me. Say, Dear Jesus. Say it louder. Dear Jesus. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Make me new. I know that you lived a sinless life. You died a sinner's death. You shed your blood for me to wash me white as snow. Come into my heart. Be my God. And I will serve you 
the best of my ability, starting today, all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, can we give God thanks for all of those who responded this morning? We're so proud of you. Hey, here in a moment, we're going to have the opportunity to joyfully give to God that which is His, so the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And we're going to put some options up on the screen for those of you who'd like to participate. But really quick, there's a lot of very practical takeaways that we need to move forward from here. For those of you, several of you, eight to ten of you that I saw that raised your hand, you said, I need to meet Jesus as my Lord and Savior today. Would you please indicate that decision on your Connect card? Not going to show up at your house, but what we are going to do is send you a drift campaign, which is an email once a day for 40 days, 30 seconds to a minute of very pivotal information that will walk you through this next season of your life after making that decision. We're so proud of you. We're going to have some people up front who would love to pray with you. Uh, before you leave, please share with them that you made that decision, and they would love to just celebrate that with you and connect with you in that way. For some of you, you and your spouse, you need to sit down and knock out a date night for real. Bare minimum. Let's do every other week at least once. What are some things that you can do together? And lastly, we've got our Growth Track 401 happening at the end of service today in our Growth Track room. If you want to learn how to be a part of something bigger than you and serve on our crew, we would invite you to participate. Let's stand together as we prepare our hearts to give. Father God, you are so good and generous and you are filled with glory God we just worship you today we thank you that your word tells us in Proverbs 11:24 that if we give freely we're given more but the stingy lose everything help our lives be defined by generosity help us give of our finances help us give of our time help us give of our skills and gifts that you have given us and we will serve you all the days of our lives and everyone said amen hey let's worship god as we give this morning